that there. So. Okay. Right, so, folks, thanks for turning up today after this amazing weather storm. Um, so today what, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the um, early origins of our ancestors, not the ones in this country which we did a few weeks ago, but we're going to do the early origins of our ancestors coming from Africa. So I was really interesting the other day, I had a, a message because I got my YouTube channel, I had a message left on my YouTube channel because I've, I've done a, a channel about slavery on there, about white and black slavery. And somebody tried to catch me out and they said, um, they said, oh, um, your video is interesting in all this, but um, uh, don't you think that, um, don't you think that this stuff about white and black is like racist? And I said, no, actually, um, we, we're all black. If we all evolved from Africa, it's just our skin colour has changed over a period of time. But originally we were all black. And I tell you what, it's put the person dead in their tracks. I, I couldn't be accused of a racist then. And I, and I think the point is, is that when you go beyond the skin colour thing, um, you actually talk about human origins. Um, our human origins have actually come from a number of different places. And some say not just Africa. So what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to try and go for a load of images. What do you think? I mean, that most of the Africans are totally different shows in their noses and groups. And um, but you could say the same about Aboriginals. You could say the same about um, Native Americans. You could say the same about Chinese, yeah, but Mongolians. I mean, if we all evolved from Africa. Why don't we all look the same? Europeans are totally different than Africans, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And the interesting thing is all about um, it's all about the unexplained answers. May maybe there were other developments from apes on the planet that came from other parts of the world. Yeah. And if that's the if that's the case, and they all converge and they develop into different peoples, I, I, I can remember um, my grandmother telling me that. Uh, in 1941, she, she was in Barry and the truck rolled in, right? And there was these weird prisoners of war on the back of the truck. These were Russian prisoners of war. Uh, not, not German, these were Russian prisoners of war because um, before, before Germany invaded Russia, Russia were our enemies. And she said there was these people on there that she'd never seen before. They were actually Russian soldiers from Mongolia. And, and, and she described them, um, and, and she could not understand, she'd never seen anything like them. They were white-looking people, but they were completely different. And I think the point is, is that when you take away the skin colour, you've still got the other issues of what the people look like. And, and uh, if, if this nice little chart here, if you think of it, everything evolved from Africa, forget about China or anywhere else, everything's evolved from Africa. Um, this is some what they think happened, right? This is the basic stuff. So four million years ago, um, Australopithecus, um, developing um, an ape that was occasionally able to stand on two legs. They were bipedal. And then it gets a little bit complicated. About three million years ago, there's different divergences. And I've got to stop now because when you get to about two million years ago, there's loads of different humanoids, loads of different types of humanoids who are sort of able to walk on two legs. Uh, there's one, only one on that two million year um, bit that looks familiar, Homo habilis. But in Africa, we've got um, uh, Paraanthropus. We've got um, Homo types of beings. And, and the point being is that uh, any, uh, in Africa, two million years ago, there were loads of types of humanoids. Not just these five, there, there were 20, 30, 40 different types of humanoids, all looking different. Exactly like the planet today, where there's no... You've got Caucasoids, you've got African, um, you've got um, Australasian, you've got Indonesian, Chin Chinese, Mongolian, blah, 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 blah. It just goes on. And then they say that somewhere around one million and a half um, years ago, uh, the apes, there's less of them. 
which is a quite a bold statement to make. And that's probably wrong, actually. Some of these other types of apes continued, and even the basic apes at the bottom four million years ago, they probably remained the same and kept on going. Um, because, you know, in Africa you get, you get your chimpanzees, you get your great ape, um, you get all these other, all these other apes, and, and the point is, and monkeys and so on, the point is, is that they remained the same for millions of years, so there's no reason why any of these couldn't have developed like this. I think the point being made is that they're saying that Homo erectus become extinct a million years ago, and then you've got this one, Homo heidelbergensis. And we've got examples of heidelbergensis in this country. Um, he's about, about just over a million, just... No, no. Oh, heidelbergensis. Homo erectus, heidelbergensis. No, no, no. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> yeah, don't worry about it. No, no, I think the point being made here is, is that it's not simple. And then we've got another chart that makes it even more complicated. I think the point being is that um, what they're saying is that um, they think that somewhere about one and a half million years ago, Homo erectus left Africa and went into Asia, and went into Europe, um, whole erect individual. Um, and then that evolved um, in different areas, and then out of Africa came this Homo heidelbergensis, that went out and so on. At the same time, there's Homo erectus living alongside Homo heidelbergensis, right? Um, and then you've got the other age-old question. You forget about all the other humanoids, right? You're presuming all the other humanoids have become extinct. That's what we were always assuming. Like today, right, if, what, we're doing, what we're saying, right, is at one point in time, all the different types of evolution become extinct. So what that means, right, as a metaphor today, is that the only type of beings left on the planet are Chinese. All the rest have become extinct. That's what this table is telling us. That's the metaphor, which we know is wrong, because you're not Chinese and nor am I. Okay? Uh, so, in other words, it's likely that all these different types of developments of humanoids are living on the planet at any one time. And there's no reason to think that they didn't interbreed and then develop into the Chinese and develop into um, um, some types of Europeans and so on and so on. Um, and then, out of Africa comes Homo Neanderthal, um, 250,000 years ago, say. And then Homo sapiens leave Africa about 200,000 years ago and they come into Europe and whatever. And then we're always told that the Neanderthals become extinct and the only type of beings on this planet are Homo sapiens. I think that's nonsense. I don't think that's true at all. Pardon? There's probably another type of world in the past, Yes. Like old races. Yeah. Like the same as well, you know, type of small type of... Yeah. But, but I, th I think the point to be made is that with all this some of these types of apes are surviving, and we'll see that in different isolated areas. Um, so, um, in fact, Homo erectus, a erect human being, one and a half million years ago, looked very similar to Neanderthal, and looked very similar to modern humans. Um, and there's no reason why those can't sort of live, to, live together. And there's no reason why Homo habilis and Australopithecines, hominids, no reason why they can't all live together at some different times. And you're talking about the disaster theory um, about the different diseases and so on. Uh, but then again, you would have small pockets of these beings left. And I think the point being uh, is like any populations, good example of this is Galapagos Islands. You've got certain types of um, uh, tortoises there. You've got certain types of Iguana and all these other beasts, right, who evolved completely separately from anywhere else, but they're still there, yeah? Whatever disasters befall them. I saw something from the Neanderthal somewhere, and I reckon they were quite aggressive in some cases to the humans, and they became uneasy. Well, as they do, 
Last week, somebody brought an article in. Yeah? I haven't got a written down. Somebody brought an article in and they said that Neanderthals weren't able to um, produce art. Um, and because they weren't able to produce art, they were thick. Therefore, that led to their extinction. Then this week, somebody prints a series of articles, and that's Neanderthal art. Spaces I yes, and, and these this is actually cave art from 65,000 years ago. Um, and there's a little bit of a bison there. This is this is this is intriguing art because it's very similar to um, Aboriginal art from Australia today. So suddenly, what you just said about them being aggressive just completely changes. And I think the point is is that we've We've got to have more of an open mind. If you if you look at um, if you look at uh, this, it's saying somewhere along the line, given uh, orangutans developed it 12 million years ago, gorillas 8 million years ago, um, you've got chimpanzees 5 million years ago. At the same time, human beings are developing, um, and the main parallel with all of this is that down here, if you look, you've got a very interesting one. <coughs> about, about, we think about 11,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, on the Isle of Flores in Indonesia. Yeah, now, that's 12,000 years ago. Yes. And that, in fact, people, that happens in Africa today. There's little pygmy people in Africa. So, what's the big problem here? And, and I think the big problem is here is that we're just trying to make we're just trying to make this overcomplicated when it's complicated enough. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's quite dangerous to say that we're just Homo sapiens sapiens, <laughs> um, and that is dangerous because that's where you get the problems. If you just say that there's loads of different evolutions of humanoids on this planet, we all live happily together ever after, then it's fine. And but you can also get a gang of bad people who do want to work and settle down and get away from the people. But they're going to be... Be tough guys, you know. They're but they're going to become quickly extinct. Yeah, if they could find it, Yeah. That would discover them and then be straight to say they all was like that. But they didn't. They could have been just a small group of the, the the thing is that little theories like that are useful, yeah. but they don't lead to the extinction of whole people. No, no, no. Um, and what they used to say, they used to say the human beings went out and killed went actively out to kill all the Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, right? Um, if you've got a, a family of Neanderthals living in North Wales, right, and you've got one living in West Wales, you've got another dotted around Britain, there's no way a group of humans is going to go out and kill them all. No. They'd have to spend their whole lives going out killing the Neanderthals, and hopefully they're, they're going to be able to kill them all without getting killed themselves. Yeah. Um, and I think the point being is that this he human evolution is a lot more complicated. And they're saying that they become extinct. Um, so this is an interesting chart. Um, if you note that Homo habilis, which has existed about um, two, three million years ago, Homo erectus about one and a half million years ago. So if you put the Homo neanderthals and the Homo sapiens living side by side a hundred thousand years ago, if you start to see Homo habilis several million years ago, uh, they're actually they're actually making tools. Uh, which is a sign of humanization. They also say that the Homo habilis 
brain capacity is, is a lot smaller than ours. But then again, that absolutely means nothing because we only use about one percent of our well, we only use about ten percent of our brain in women. So if they if Homo habilis used twenty percent of their brain, that would equate to ten percent of our brain, right? It makes no it doesn't tell us anything. Okay? Um, Homo habilis is still actually making tools. And we're making tools as well. So you can think of several people that weren't as good as fishing or weren't quite as good as making pencils and somebody else that was good at maybe picking seeds. Yeah, like anything. And their brain was developed more into the lines that they were good at. Is that, that's what we do as human beings today. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you, if you look at this, right, I, I showed this chart on Thursday, right? And I, and I think one of them put their hand up in the room from Lancet Major, and they actually said, um, "Why is it? Why is in fact the difference between any of these?" Um, the difference is, is that um, Australopithecus afrensis, which is four million years ago, isn't living all their time on the ground run, running around. Sometimes they might be living up a tree. Okay, Homo habilis, habilis. Um, Two, three million years ago, then, it, then when you come to Homo sapiens, there's absolutely no real difference um, in their in their ability. Their brain size is different. The ones on the left look more ape-like than the ones on the right. And their environment their environment's changing. Exactly. But hang on, hang on a minute, right? Uh, if you go to the Amazon Amazon basin, right, you it would be best to live up, live up a tree there as well because you're going to be eaten there. Um, so you know, living up trees doesn't really tell us much. And and actually, can you see where it's got really complicated now? There's not going to be any evidence of them or people living up trees. Of course, there's going to be no evidence of people living up trees. Um, True. Can you see how complicated this gets? Yeah. What's complicated is that um, we're constantly saying is that the stuff on the right is becoming extinct. Um, and they, they always argue the stuff on the right is becoming extinct because the people on the, the beings on the left are hunting the beings on the right. Um, and so there is little bits of evidence for that, but there's there's evidence for um, wolves eating human beings, but it doesn't mean to say that the human being has become extinct. There's also evidence for human beings eating wolves, but there's still wolves around. That absolutely tells us nothing. Um, and if you look at this stuff in green here, you can see um, Homo florensis, Homo neanderthal, even this one, um, Homo hydrogensis, they're all sort of in the same sort of span, okay? Um, and the interesting thing about this is, is that we now know that there may have been up to a dozen different types of humanoids living on this planet about 20,000 years ago, which is very close to us in time. Uh, now this... These are the tiny little remains of um, a creature found in Africa known as Lucy. Yeah. Um, a very small um, hominid, very small being. Um, but there's one, we won't really look at the bones of Lucy too much because I, I think there is a point being made. Is that the further you go back in time, the less and less of these human remains we find. Okay? Let's hope it's in, in the doorway. Yeah. They got lots of those. They, um, yeah. Had a woman's hip bones. Yeah. Exactly in that position. Exactly. Almost like the same size. And why not? I, but the, I think the, the point the point is here is that but because we've got so few remains remaining of most of these beings, 
we're always making the presumption that that's what they were, that's their atomically, atomical perfection. Okay, they weren't diseased and whatever. But we know that we get humans today that their, their bone structure has been distorted and, and altered. But they're still part of the human race. They're not a different type of humanoid. I think this is really important to remember. Um, now, th this is really interesting. I'm really excited about this. Uh, the, these were found in the 1970s, 1976 by Mary Yuki. Um, these are um, the Tongai uh, footprints uh, from Tanzania, as it was then. Um, and the really interesting thing about these footprints is that there are two sets. Um, it's likely that the person on the right um, would have been about five foot in height. And the person on the left would have been smaller. Um, and they're worth walking side by side. And at the same time, um, there's evidence of other prints either side of other animals. Um, these are being formed um, in, in Tufa, um, volcanic ash, which is cooling down. Um, now, I, I, I can handle hot coals. When a hot coal comes out of the fire in the house, I chuck it back on with my fingers to everybody's disgust. Um, you can't handle hot coals at a 400 degrees C, but I do. Um, I, but I think the point I'm trying to make is that you, you would have the ability to just walk across this tufa. As long as you keep walking, it's not going to affect you. But what, yeah, exactly. But what's going to happen is that your footprints yeah. are going to then be preserved in the tufa. And that's exactly what's happened here. Got some really nice information about these if we're, if we're able to get through it. Um, there's Latoli. Um, it's near the old Dubai Gorge, and it's found by, these footprints were found by Mary Leakey. So in this area, uh, um, the, the, the gorge itself, um, and across uh, Tanzania and Kenya, uh, we, we found really early human remains, their footprints, their tools. The only thing that we haven't heard, uh, found is the, is the squeak. We haven't found their voice. We found everything else. Um, and even habitational sites as well. And you are here, there you go, in old Tanzania. Um, and there, there you go, there, there, there's the set. Uh, you can find other footprints cut across. It's presumed that the, uh, the, the smaller footprints were made exactly at the same time as the large footprints, it would make sense because they're um, cooling at the same time in the tufa, the weathered tooth. There it is. And they found other footprints. And there you go. Now, I, I made a mistake the other day. The, the, the size itself is it's not huge footprint size. But we'll come on to that. Um, and these, these are other footprints that they have actually found since. They've actually found uh, other footprints in uh, the tow line. So obviously as it's cooling, uh, you've got other footprints and you've got other beasts and you've got other animals walking around. So, so it's fascinating stuff. And there you go. Um, the, um, the thing is, when you're trying to do comparisons of these 1976 photographs with a, a modern print, it's a bit different because we walk differently now. Okay, we've got shoes. Um, I've walked around without bare feet and so have you. And the point is, is that you walk differently when you're on bare feet. You like your feet to just touch everything. Experience, right? Your foot isn't really interested as it's going along. It's just the feet off. The heel, toe, heel, toe. This is more like heel, arch, toe. Heel, let's just gently go forward. Gently take the walk and enjoy it. Right? We don't enjoy walking as modern day humans because we've got we got shoes on. So it's a bad comparison. But I think the point is being made here. It was a humanoid who made the footprints. Because there is similarities. There's back, forget about the arc, and then you go towards the toes and the feet. And that's what's similar between the two footprints. So heel, toes, 
over. And that's exactly what's going on. So you can see, you can see the, um, yeah, you can see what's going on here. You can see the pressure. So we can work out the height of these people from the, from the size of the footprints as well. Um, so here we go. I don't know if you're able to read this, so I'll read it out. So um, the toe line, as, we, as we've already worked out, is in Tanzania. If I enlarge this a bit, oh, there you go. Perfect. Um, perfectly preserved footprints in volcanic ash. Um, Olduvai Gorge. The location and tracks were discovered by archaeologist Mary Leakey in 1976 and excavated in 1978. Uh, we know about the impressions that they're bipedal. Um, other footprints have been found since, and they date to 3.7 million years ago. 3.7 million years ago, they fossilized. Um, well, actually, fossilized isn't the word. They, they, they heated up and cooled down. It's a slightly different process of fossilization. Um, they, they're not dissimilar to our footprints at Haysborough, off, of, off the Norfolk coast, dating back up to about a million years ago. Um, and it, it's, it's definitely um, a certain type of hominid. They've given a completely different name there. Um, an Ardipithecus ramidus, which, to be honest with you, means nothing, really. Um, it could equally be any of the other hominids of around that time. And these footprints um, um, at Latoli include um, human remains, animal remains, um, a clear analysis can tell us um, that they, they probably are linked to any other Australopithecus fighting um, in Africa at that time. But I think the point being made here is, again, these, these, are, these are not too different from us today. Really, really not different. We know about Lotoli because um, there's been lots of work done there. Finding the footprints was great. Um, although much debated, lots of lots of um, lots of discussion made on this. It said that the step length, um, the stride length, and the stride width, and the foot angle determined that um, Australopithecus um, afrensis was more human-like in gait than ape-like. So in other words, they walked up right. They walked along like us. They didn't have shoes because they didn't let you need them. I'm sure if they wore sandals, they'd soon settle out. That's not the point. Um, so it was a hominid. Um, probably had a. It says here that um, this hominid um, would. Uh, it says that attributed to a species of brain size, very similar to that modern chimpanzees and gorillas, which really means nothing. We're talking about the heel strike, and we're sort of about, talking about the toes hitting it off, uh, as we do with humanoids. Um, except I find it very difficult to walk with my with my feet because um, um, I've got uh, my my uh, my big toe is shorter um, than um, the little the, the toe alongside it, right? So that sticks out. So if I'm going across rocks, that's the first thing that hits the rock, and uh, it hurts. But that's me. Um, so the dating techniques that we're using, we're using. Um, something known as potassium argon dating, um, which looks directly at the chemicals and also looking at the strata, um, looking at the different build-ups of strata then, given it to about 3.7 million years ago. So here, here we go, so, some of the more important points here. Um, they, they found more, more footprints since as well. Um, they, they've made uh, impressions of this. The hominid prints were produced by three individuals, one walking in the footprints of the other. Interesting. Making the preceding footprints difficult to recover. As the tracks lead in the same direction, they might have been produced by a group um, um, wanting to go to a waterhole together, um, and you've got the smaller set, small nuclear family. Anyway, moving along. So saying that the... Um, the foot length of the one hominid was about 21.5 centimetres. Um, so if we get the diary, let's work out the shoe size on that. That's if, that's if, that's if it's actually in here. 
see if we can uh, let's see, see if we can work out the scale on that one. Here we go. Um, I don't have a I don't have a transversion table. Can you can you can you work that out into uh, modern foot measurements? No. Anyway, not a problem. So anyway, uh, we, we worked out that the, the we worked out from the other class that um, um, that the one hominid with a big feet um, twenty one point five centimeters in length. We worked out that that person was about five foot tall, um, and the width of the footprint uh, was about ten centimeters. So that's probably about right, isn't it? Yeah. Because we would walk today. Uh, and the length pace is 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 uh, the length pace is half um, is half a meter. So there you go. Is that about right? Is that how we walk today? Yeah. I walk a bit more. Than that. Yeah. And we've got the height there, the height. Yeah. So we've got a metre and a half up to about here, which is basically just under five foot. So the other individual is a lot, lot smaller, but not too much. Um, their footprints are 18.5 centimetres. You change, yeah, that's right. You're going to change. So they found more footprints since, um, and I, I just want to move on a little bit, but they found more footprints um, in 2015, um, another two individuals. So they're finding more footprints at Latoli and more information all the time to really help us understand what's going on. Um, and they're trying to preserve them, um, and we know about the date. Um, and what we want to do now is look at Peking Man. Now, Peking Man is a very interesting uh, beast indeed. Uh, and Peking Man was lost in 1941. Yeah, I, I think we've got, some, we've got some images along the line. But the, um, the unfortunate thing about Peking Man is that um, all the remains were destroyed some say in the following way, others say they simply disappeared. They were from a Chinese um, cave known as um, um, Chao Qi Ten or um, Shao Kodan, um, which is near Beijing. And the original discoveries were made in the uh, beginning of the 1920s. And all together, um, they think they found the remains of up to. Um, Five individuals, um, uh, various bits of um, skull, various bits of um, jaw, various bits of teeth excavated until the 1930s, all from this cave. Um, and this was really important archaeological evidence. Um, and various individuals looked at the excavation uh, of this cave, uh, British archaeologist. Um, a French archaeologist, a German archaeologist, uh, all studying um, and making casts of the skulls and all the rest of it um, up until their disappearance in 1941. And we do believe that the human remains date to about 750,000 years ago, the Homo erectus from China. So whatever's happening, we've got human populations in China um, three quarters of a million years ago um, and it's a shame that th those human remains disappeared because if they hadn't disappeared we might be talking about a, a completely different evolution theory than we have today it's just having the archaeological evidence it was also interpreted by a Swedish and Austrian archaeologist that excavated the site as well and a Canadian archaeologist and it's said that um, that the remains found in China could be identified as a new species. Um, some believe it evolved from Africa. Some believe it evolved.
evolved from apes uh, in that neck of the woods or, or um, hominin types in that neck of the woods. But we haven't got more, any more information than that at this minute. Um, and it said that um, up to, um, it says that over 200 pieces of artifacts were found all together as you, Jukadun uh, cave. Um, excavations resumed after the war, um, but they weren't able to find um, much more than they actually found before. Um, and it's, it's one of those long-ended debates, and it's really, really controversial. And it's saying that uh, other human remains similar to that have been found on isolated islands like Java and in China and elsewhere. But it's, again, that great debate, which I do believe um, takes us on to um, our friend at the, on the island of Florida, Florence. So they, they believe that that sort of reconstruction of what uh, Peking Man's skull was like, so those, reconstru those bits of casts that were made into a, a reconstructed skull. Um, and there he is. Um, it's very strange that the Chinese have got a whole museum dedicated to human remains that no longer exist. But it's typical Chinese. Which is great. They're quite proud of Peking Man. They really are. A Zukadan um, site museum near the cave. Um, and they're, they're basically saying, that we've got these, these humanoids here. You know, we're, we're quite proud of them. You know, where do they fit in the whole table? And they, they're really desperate to find more human remains in Zukadan cave. And there's some facial reconstructions. Um, it's interesting. Um, in some of my earlier notes, um, it's believed that one of the teeth did actually survive, it survived in a locket. Uh, and it's believed that um, that there down there, you can see, you can see the enamel yeah. and part of the mandible bone. They they believe that that um, was is the only surviving piece of human remain to actually come from um, the cave um, at um, Zucadan. I'm sure I'll be correct as well. But Homo erectus uh, pecaninensis. So some say it's a direct piece that's evolved from Africa. Um, as I said, some other people have got other ideas that they may have developed some but from some other monkey-like creatures down in that area. Uh, but then again, um, very, looking very humanoid. Oh, that, that's a photograph of the, of the bits of it uh, back in the day um, before the thing disappeared. Lots of conspiracy theories. Obviously, that, that's that, all, all the dark areas and bits of skull survived are the best one because there were five um, skulls surviving altogether, different beasts, but this was the best preserved one. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a little break, um, and if there's no questions, we shall all have a cup of tea, okay? Sorted. The Piltdown Man, yeah, that was a total fake, yeah. That's right. That's right. I can't remember where I saw it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was Piltdown Man forgery from uh, 1912. It wasn't as discovered uh, as a forgery until uh, 1949. Right, let's take a break. Did I bring a cup? And so what we'll it sounds good. It sounds good. Well, let us know next week. Um, so what what we've uh, what we're what we're doing at this minute now? We're going to be looking at um, we're going to be looking at me. Yeah, I do look good, don't I? Well, hang on a minute. I'm over here. Uh, we're going to be looking at um, looking at a hobbit. Uh, I, I I haven't really um, 
We'll get some images in there anyway. You can't read that, so it's me. So anyway, what we're going to be do- looking at, a, a, a few, a few, about over a decade ago, they, they found um, the remains of a very small um, creature that lived on the island of um, Flores, Indonesia. Um, it was discovered in 2003. The individual was about uh, one... 1.1 meters in height. And a really interesting thing is, is one of um, one of my students back then called uh, Mary was actually involved in the excavations, and it was really controversial because um, the the Indonesians were saying, look, we you know, we found this stuff, and people from the people were coming in saying, oh, no, you haven't. You know, you can find little people like this, and they 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 they've got various dates on them, ranging from say 12,000 years ago. Uh, to about 190,000 years ago. Um, and they found uh, not just the, the remains of uh, one or two um, skeletons, um, but they found the remains of nine. And it's, it's quite strange that they're finding these things at the same time as you've got Lord of the Rings films coming out, you've got The Hobbits. It's really odd. They found tools. Didn't yeah, they found tools. And the thing is, what well, they found on the island, Flora's... Um, Everything become miniaturized. So they had miniaturized elephants. Um, so they had miniaturized birds, and everything was small, including the human beings. Um, and it was this was really interesting because they got stone tools recovered alongside skeletal remain, which was absolutely fascinating. Um, so they find in all this stuff, um, and it was from these little islands down here. And I think I think in a few things. I think in well. If the human remains date back to about um, uh, 200,000 years ago, say, uh, how did they get there in the first place? We know we know at one stage that this was known as um, Sunderland. Not Sunderland, up north, but Sunderland. And it was that, this was actually joined to, um, to Southern Asia. You could actually walk out here, on, and they would just walk along here to, to those islands. Um, and, and that's where they were. So we, we were saying uh, before you come in that... Um, on this planet, we've got, we've got loads of different subspecies and species of humanoids that are diverted off in different directions. Um, and, and we've got pygmies living on the planet today. And there are small people living on these islands because they're really isolated. But these people in Flores were really small, just, just, about, just over about a metre in height. Yeah, they said, Go on. on that Side by side with, with normal human beings, yeah. At the same time. With tall people. Um, it's, it's saying that, that the more of these homo florist, they call them, have actually been found. Um, and they're saying that uh, lots of their remains have been found and they're really struggling to work out where these people evolved from. Did they actually definitely evolve from uh, the likes of Africa? When did they actually get there? Um, and there's a reconstruction of one of the faces. She's not very pretty, is she? Oh, do you know it's a she? <laughs> um, the discovery um, in this cave. You can't really see this image very well. Yes. But you've obviously got the, the other eight as well. So you've, you've got yeah. um, a large number in there. So the specimens were discovered in an Indonesian island by an Austro- Australian-Indonesian term team. Um, finding up to nine individuals and lots of stone implements uh, appropriate to uh, a one metre tall uh, person. Um, and what they also found in there were, were the remains of a very small elephant, uh, very similar to the Borneo elephant. In, when, it was, when the details were released and unveiled in 2004, um, it was referred to as the Hobbit. And it's, it's really interesting that... Um, you know, that you've got a book coming out and at the same time you've got archaeological evidence to say that you've got these pe- small little people living in small places like caves. No, at the same time, it's really interesting. They found about 30 foot they found there, didn't they? Really, really deep. So, that, so, so you can see a bit of the cave there. I, I, actually, I'm hoping that we've got an image of the cave. There she is. There's another one. More prettier. That, that, that's your type of woman in it, Michael. But the thing is, the, the point is, she looks really human. You know, she's got she's got the large nose, like like um like an Australian. And um, Indonesia isn't too far away from Australia. And one thing we're thinking now 
is that um, the way people managed to get to Australia was via this sort of long length of land known as the Sunderland Shelf, and they went all the way across into Australia. And at the same time, these people are evolving by themselves. They get trapped on an island. We were talking about the Galapagos Island. Um, on the Galapagos Island, you've got, you've got the, the, the tortoises and you've got the iguana, iguanas, and they're all developing um, um, themselves completely independent. And they're able to swim and all the rest of it, yeah? Uh, these, are in, these are developing, and then the aboriginals in Africa are developing completely their own way. And we're now starting to think that people managed to get to um, Australia, you know, 75, 100,000 years ago. And they, they, they completely isolated them. And they, they developed their own wonderful art. They developed their own way of culture, their dream space, and all the rest of it. And it's similar to say about these individuals. But again, where are they evolving from? Are they actually evolving from Africa or are they evolving from somewhere else? Really dangerous, really dangerous talk I'm giving you now. Um, and basically what we got, we got loads of different reconstructions. There's a female, and then we think maybe some of the men look like this. Much more ape-like. Um, these are all the images coming out in 2004, but if you take away the head, the, 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 the arms and, 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 the, and, and the muscles and all the rest of it look very similar to, to, uh, to us, which, which you can work out from the bone record. Um, that's, not, that's not her. Um, but that's obviously a more humanoid skull. But uh, there you go. There's the cave. So, so you're really excavating down, and, and they're going layer upon layer upon layer, um, and they're, they're finding they're finding so many uh, deposits in here. I mean, it's a really important, really delicate site. Um, and you, you can see you can see that they, they they've cleared all these areas and they're excavating. Um, and obviously they're finding, um, they found nine individuals back in 2003. And more recently they're finding more, more of the remains. Wonderful cave system. And they're actually, that's actually quite a few feet there now as there is. There she is. There's some, there's some of the remains. This is a... Uh, this isn't like this isn't the other one, is it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we don't have all the human remains, but lots of the human remains are fairly intact. Um, and that that that's a skull. You can get an idea of the size of the skull from his skull. So obviously it's it's quite small. Yeah, but it's quite small. But 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 the point is we missed the point is we made that point earlier on, didn't we? With Australopithecine skulls out coming out of Africa, they had small skulls, but we only use 10% of our, our brain. So you know you've got this brain op. Whatever they're doing in there is probably not going to affect you at all because we're only using 10% of our brain. So if they're using 20% of their brain, then they're thinking as much as we are, but they're using more of their space. Yeah, exactly. But then, then again, then again, um, yeah, but then again, when you think about it, right? Um, I've, I've got a pet duck in the garden, right? And and he, he waits every night with his with his, you know, the drake. He waits every night to see me to put him to bed, and then he goes to bed. And in the morning, when I'm when I'm going out anywhere, he rushes to the gate um, to peck me and say hello. Well, their their brains are really small, right? And he's able to eat and drink and swim and all the rest of it, right? And it, they're really small brains. Now, if a bird's able to do that, bird brain, if a bird's able to do that, I, I know full well, if, if I go outside and chuck a rock at a crow, right, the crow will remember me, right, and it will remind its friends to avoid me, but if I'm nice to that crow, it'll know I'm a nice person, and apparently crows remember. Now, if a crow's brain, which is really small, can remember all that, this brain itself is actually fairly big. And when you're talking about just being able to eat and drink and all the rest of it, right? My God, they, 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 they might be using a lot more of their brain and they're able to do lots of other things like communicate, like say hello and, 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 and say, communicate with these other beings, you know? All, all these films about, all these films that we used to wa watch when we were in the 1980s and 1970s about Tarzan and the apes and used to find all these pygmy people, right? 
It's all based on something. It's all based on something. J.R.R. Tolkien, right, when he was when he was writing his books in the 1920s, 1930s, Lord of the Rings, he was writing about the hobbits, right? Now, we had an idea from the pygmies in Africa that, you know, you can have small beings. We had no idea of these people in the island of Flores. But then when you when you look down at it, you actually see that, that we've got all, all these types of things that they write about, there's some fact behind all of them. Even if they're before the time that the discoveries are made. Um, You talk about my missus. She's five. She's four. She's four foot eleven, right? My, my lady friend's mother was the same as that four foot seven, four foot eight. Mm. Yeah, she's tiny, and but. Her husband was a giant. Uh, yeah, but right, but we we were talking about evolution. We have got this little bit of a chart here, and unfortunately, because I opened this very thick box, a lot of these. Oh, look at that. It's a good point. I'm, not, I'm sorry about that. But the point is, because they're smaller, right? It's like the Chinese. Chinese people are smaller. The Chinese people are down here, right? And Japanese people are up here, right? And you think, how, right? But they, they only live at that distance away from each other, right? And you start to think, that actually made... The, the Japanese evolved this way, the Chinese evolved that way. They're still human beings, but they're like different types of human beings. And it's like these, these small and tall people, you know? Go on. Yes. Same level, yeah, yeah. And he said, yeah, in general, they are general. But there's loads of different reasons. There's no, yeah, there's yeah. no set reason. The, 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 but yeah, you know, I, I was, I said at the beginning, why right, I don't have, I, I, I do lots of stuff on YouTube, right? And I got this video on there, right? And somebody tried to call me racist the other day, right? He said, you know, you, you, you know, obviously you think white people are better than black people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, white, you, you're saying white people are better than black people. I, I actually, I actually put them dead in their tracks. I actually said, I actually said, um, uh, all right then, right? My ancestors, are, my ancestors, if they did, evolved from Africa, who were black. Therefore, I'm black, right? Except I live in the northern hemisphere, and because of what happened, your skin goes white. But technically, I'm black, right? So I'm as black as you, and it, they're dead. The conversation's dead, right? Because I'm not interested in, in colour. But what I am interested in is this evolution. Well, um, at, the at the top of the chart there, right, we're getting close to the end now. At the top of the chart there, what, what we've got, we've got, um, we've got this development of human beings um, as far ago as four million years ago, right down here on the chart, Australopithecus in Africa or whatever you want to call it, you're on two legs. We got, you missed the Latoli footprints with, with, um, in Tanzania, where we got um, um, lava fossilized footprints. So somebody walked across lava and, it, and it's fossilized it. Right? Technically not fossilization, but it's preserved it. Right? So we, we know we've got people walking upright because we got their footprints uh, 3.7 million years ago. And then we got stone tools coming in about 3.5 million years ago. And then we've got all this here, people leaving Africa at different times and clothing and cooking and fire and speech and all these other things. And then we've got this evolution 
Um, and and this, is, this is really important. But the point is, um, at any one time, you, you had loads of different types of humanoids on the planet. Right? You know, and that's the, that's the slide that I want to actually finish off in a, short, in a few moments. Um, and actually, that is the last slide, so we can go back. Um, and if we, if, we actually, if we actually go to the beginning, right? Oh, there, there's the footprints, if you want to look. There's the Latoli footprint, right? Yeah, so we've got one male set there, and somebody probably following in the footprints again, and you've got another set alongside, so it's up to three individuals. That's, 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 um, that's Lucy, okay? That's, um, that's Lucy, who comes from Africa, who's exactly the same as the bones at Flores. Yeah, so, exactly, so that's what we were saying. Um, and this is this is that chart that you actually preempted, Paul. <laughs> uh, what, what we were saying, and I think the most important thing with this is, right, uh, is that if you look, what you can see is that at any time on this planet, uh, at any at one point, right, three, four, three, four million years ago, you've got loads of different types of apes. These are only a few, a few of them, yeah, and. and and what, what we're told is that sometime in Africa, all these ones on the right become extinct. They stop evolving, which is rubbish. Um, and then the ones on the left evolve. Um, any of these they find on the right, they kill. So that leads to their extinction. Nonsense. Africa's a big place. Um, and there's people living in the Amazon basin in, 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 Amer in, in America. They've never been seen before, right? Completely independent, as they are in Indonesia and all the rest of it. Um, so, you know, unless you actively hunt them and go through every single tree on this planet, which we haven't done, right, no species is going to become extinct. So some of these probably have developed here. And what probably happened here, um, and I think the end bit now, is that um, human beings, which were Homo sapiens sapiens, evolved alongside Homo neanderthals. And then you've got these Denisovians that, that were evolving in Asia. You've got these ones in, on the island of Flores um, who are very similar to the Aust Australasians in Australia. And then you start to think, and, and then you've got Peking Man, right? Um, 750,000 years ago, in, in, found in Peking, but the remains were lost in 1941. You've got all these different types of humanoids developing right, on the planet. And all these develop further, I think. I, I think all these actually continue developing. And now today, what we find is all of this, right? Okay, all of this is finally the final development into the Japanese, into the Mon Mongolians, the Mongoloids, as my grandmother used to describe, uh, the Native Americans, Africans, um, if we haven't mentioned the Chinese, Caucasoi, and all the rest of it. And then you've got the small and the tall people, differences in features, screw the skin colour, everything's really different, right? And I think that none of this is an end. All of these keep developing, right? And that's where we are today. None of these end. And I, and I think the point is with anything in history and archaeology, right, if things continue evolving, um, in Roman Britain, right, when the Romans, when the Roman Empire finally collapsed in the West, whatever there was left of the Roman military or anything in Britain, in the year 476, right, that's the end date, the Romans still, the, we were still Romanized, we still had Roman ways, we still continued, and actually, uh, Roman civilization continued to evolve in Britain, because this building is a byproduct of that, this was produced by Christianity, and the legacy of Rome is Christianity. So if you look at that as a metaphor for this, we've got Neanderthal genes inside us. That's continued. Um, the art has been influenced by Neanderthals and other ancestors. And these little people still continue in other parts of the world, isolated. Um, and you're talking about all these other things about tall and short, all these are around today. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So I think that's actually a good wind-up time. That, that's, that's a good thingy. Um, I know you've, you've come in late there, Paul, but um, are, are there any questions? Uh, 
Yes. But we didn't get much else from their, their strain, but we did get our antibodies because they lived in the, the, the And where did they come from? Nowhere? They came from the Neanderthals themselves, yeah, and that's and the lived, point. They lived on, on the borders of the ice. Exactly, exactly. That's why they developed. Big lungs and all the rest of it, and all, yeah, all that's come through to us yeah. uh, because we, we've, we've developed that into our humanity where we are today um, and I don't think I don't think it's the annihilation of anything everything continues and you you, you mentioned it earlier on it is continuing today because you mentioned but you, you, I'll, I'll, that's fine you leave that there They're different types of people. Their mindset. Mentality. There's something different. Because, because, because I, I tell you, I tell you what, right? I, I, I've got. I teach different groups of people, right? For a really small group here, but um, I, I've got, I've got one group of people in Landswick Major, right? That don't get on well with my progeny people, right? I don't do trips with them anymore, right? They don't go together, and and every 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 week the people in Landswick Major, right? It's like, oh, we don't really want anything to do with those people because we're different, right? And they are different. Yeah? O on Thursday, all my students from Lanthrop Major turned up except for one, right? So I had 11 people in the room, right? They all turned well, two people didn't turn up. They all turned up in the room. I was sat there chatting there, talking. They did my class. It got to half past 12 and I finished. And then I, then I phoned up every single one in person in Bridgend and all 10 of them cancelled just like that. We're not going out in this. We're not going out. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. It's, it's not. It's only down the road. I've had all my people turn up, and none of you guys are turning up. And I think that's the same analogy. People think differently in different areas, right? Um, the mindsets are different. That's what you're thinking about. The mindset. The mindset, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's just something there. There is something there, yeah. Something, you know, so, and that could be different. Ah! Yeah, now we're seeing there's different ways. Yeah. And, and our mindset is changing. Our, our mindset is evolving. And I, I think it all comes back to us realizing that we've, we've developed all in different ways. There are different ways of development. For, for example, my partner, some say she thinks really different from me. And I'm thinking, I don't get this. I don't get it, right? Not because she's a female, uh, but she she thinks really different from me some days, and I just don't get it because she comes from a different part of the country completely. Yeah. Um, she's short, um, and I think that that feeling of shortness, no way. That feeling of shortness gives her a different mindset. It's almost as if, right, I'm short, right. Um, I've got to try harder, right? Um, I, I'm not as strong as you, but if, if I want to, I can punch you. Um, you know, there's a different mindset because she's a different person than me, right? Um, and that's exactly everything that we said. And I think it's all to do with this. We've all evolved differently. We've got bits and pieces of everything. And I think that's with archaeology overall. 
Um, you know, at one stage in this country, right, um, you could have a, you could have um, in England, you might have a village where there's where there's people from sort of Viking stock. You might have one that there's a village of Roman stock. You might have one that there's a village of Anglo-Saxon stock, Irish stock, and all the rest of it, right? They're all different. They've all come from somewhere, but they're all different bits. I um, don't know for my upbringing. I'm a natural hunter-gatherer from, from the past. Oh, why not? I've been a fisherman. I've worked in forest. Ah. I like living on my own, hunting, fishing, yeah. exploring. J -j -j go on. Living off the land. I can go down the beach and eat all bloody limpets just with my family from out. Yeah. I can survive off of nature. Yeah. Raw mushrooms. I don't know all the herbs because I haven't eaten green so much when I was younger, but I know that yeah. I come from the past and my genes are way back hunter gathering. And, and, and do, do, you know, do you know one thing, right? I, one thing, right? I, I have lived in my life in about 30 different places, right? And then about five years ago, I find out, right, that both lines of my family have got gypsy lineage, right? So I cannot settle. Um, I, I, I can't deal with living in the valley, right? I can't deal with living in towns and cities. I've got to be out there. Yes. Yeah, I've done with the electric, so I'm going to call it a day now. So, um...